Okay guys, so before I get into the actual review, I have some big news for the series. In case you haven't heard, Kaijin Raid has officially been confirmed to begin an anime. Toho Animation official Twitter account posted a video earlier today that shows a short PV announcing the manga's anime adaptation. And that's pretty much it, just the announcement. We didn't get any info on what the studio is going to be animating it, when it's coming out, or how many episodes it's going to be. But hey, at least we got an official confirmation that the series is getting an anime, which I believe is very much well deserved. I mean, the series has just hit a huge milestone of having 8 million copies in circulation, and like I've been saying for a while now, I kind of feel like that it's written so that every 3 chapters can be easily translated into an anime episode, and each arc is pretty much a whole season itself. Now, getting into the chapter, it actually starts off by showing us a huge reveal that director Shinomiya's consciousness was alive this entire time inside of Kaiju number 9, and he's been fighting this entire time trying to slow down 9's evolution. But he's starting to fade away, and the more he fades, not only does number 9 get stronger, but the speed that he can produce new Daikaiju have increased as well, and we actually get this quick montage of brand new Daikaiju that have been popping up over the last month. There's this like giant glowing white kaiju, one that's like a monolith of faces, one that's kind of racing down random roads and trying to chase down cars, one that's able to leave giant craters in the side of mountains, and a lot more new and seemingly powerful daikaiju. Now, the interesting thing is that none of these kaiju are actually doing any real damage to any of the cities or any of the people around them. They kind of just show up, scare a few people, and then just disappear without any real rhyme or reason. I mean, there was one that kind of looked like a deformed ballerina that seemingly was looking for something in this random city that it popped up in, but we don't have any insight into what it was looking for. And I don't think it was actually looking for Kafka because we already know that Nine has the director's memories. So if he wanted to find Kafka, he'd know that he had to just go to one of the many bases inside of Japan that the Defense Force has. And then we cut over to a meeting with the Defense Force higher-ups, and we hear from Vice Captain Hoshino that basically this is pretty much the start of the Kaiju disaster that Number 10 warned them was coming that Number 9 was planning on doing, but it's actually happening a lot sooner than they originally thought it would. Now, I think it's kind of pretty clear what's being set up here in this chapter, because there were, I think, 14, I think they said, total Kaiju sightings in the last month of brand new Daikaiju. And I think each one of those kaijus are being set up as a boss fight for Kafka and the others before they get to fight number 9 again. And I'm hoping that each character ends up getting their own individual kaiju fight, because I feel like characters like Reno, Iharu, and Kikuru have all kind of earned their own individual fight at this point. I mean, sure, it'll be a little weird to see some of the other members of the 3rd Division new recruits get their own individual kaiju fight against a daikaiju since we haven't seen them since, like, what, chapter 34 or something like that? But I kind of feel like it would be kind of cool to see them come back into this story for the first time and the three of them team up in order to fight against the Daikaiju and take it down by themselves. Now one bit of cool information we end up finding out in this chapter is that Narumi is apparently being given the suit made from Kaiju number one, which means he's going to be the only character we've seen so far in the series have two Kaiju weapons. And they also have a few other candidates that they don't actually name by name in this chapter, but I'm thinking one of them is probably going to end up being Iharu. But they have some other candidates picked out to actually wield weapons made from Kaiju number 3, 5, and 7. And we don't have any information on exactly what kind of weapons those are just yet. We don't know if they're full suits or they're just kind of like weapons like the gauntlets that Director Shinomiya had. But anyway, then we cut back to Director Shinomiya and we see as he's finally fading away, he kind of just like passes the torch and his will on to the next generation of Defense Force Kaiju Hunters. And we basically see that he's asking for them and Kafka to basically avenge him and stop Kaiju number 9 from doing whatever he's planning on doing. And just like how we got a montage of all the kaiju in the beginning of the chapter, we kind of end this chapter off by seeing a quick montage of all the kind of main, more important characters we've been introduced to throughout the series so far, like, you know, Iharu, Reno, stuff like that. And we see them all training, basically get, trying to get stronger in order to face off against these new kaiju threats, which, again, I think is basically here to mirror the beginning of the chapter and kind of set up the idea that each one of these characters are going to be having their own individual fights or group fights against some of these new kaiju. And then at the very end of the chapter, we cut over to Narumi and Kikuru, and we see something that I've been calling to happen for the longest time now finally coming true. And we end up finding out that basically Kikuru is being given her mom's kaiju number suit, which I mean, I think it was pretty obvious since we were first introduced to the suit and the fact that her mom had it, that she was going to be the one to end up inheriting it. And considering how quickly she's been growing without having the suit and basically just pretty much almost at the level where she can take on a daikaiju by herself, once she actually manages to adapt to it and basically master the suit, she's going to be a monster. But anyway guys, that's all for the chapter. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to reach my first milestone of hitting 1,000 subscribers. And I'd really appreciate your help trying to get there. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.